from the heart of Philly, this is CBS News Philadelphia. Now at 8, a community comes together following this huge fire in Frankfurt. What's next for those who still can't return home? And no umbrellas are needed today. We'll break down a day full of Sunday sunshine and tell you when the rain will likely make a return. But first, Ross. Hey guys, good morning. We are just hours away now from the start of the Fall for the Arts Festival here in Chestnut Hill. We'll set the scene for what you can expect today and also we'll check in with one of the local artists and show off some of his work. A great day for that event. Today is Sunday, September 15th. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jan Carabello. And I'm Howard Murillo. Thank you so much for starting your Sunday with us. Let's get right on over to meteorologist Grant Gilmore, who is in for a Tammy Seuss. We'll look at your next weather forecast. It's shaping up to be a great morning. Yeah, a great morning. Good morning to be here with you guys this morning as we kick off Great's our heavy. Sunday morning. Let's get your Sunday started. A great start out there. You're looking out the window. You see plenty of sunshine and not not much fog just a couple of spots of almost a hint of some fog, but compared to the last couple of mornings, not really a concern as we get the day started. Here's what to expect as we go through the next few days. Temperatures today will be a little bit cooler than yesterday afternoon. We'll settle with highs in the low to maybe some middle 80s later on this afternoon. We'll keep conditions pleasant for the Eagles game tomorrow and for our re entry into the school week and the work week tomorrow. Great looking conditions for your Monday. And then here comes that chance of rain. Honestly, almost every single day after Monday does have a chance of rain, at least at some point as we go through the upcoming week. It won't be a washout of a week, but I'll walk you through the forecast because we're kind of getting into that pattern again where rain is going to be on on the horizon. 67 in Philly right now. The rest of the area generally in the low to mid 60s out there, so it's actually a little warmer this morning than it was this time yesterday morning. We're just not going to warm as much later on today. Just a few passing clouds, mainly closer to the coast and to South Jersey, but overall we're finding mostly sunny skies across the area today. High temps are around 83 degrees in the city, 74 degrees down the shore. Lehigh Valley around 82 degrees this afternoon. Again, your Monday is good, but we do see that chance of rain return. I'll let you know what we know here coming up in just a few guys back over to you. All right, Grant, thank you very much. Happening tomorrow, family and supporters will mark five years since the disappearance of young Dulce Alaves in Bridgeton. Dulce was playing with her little brother at the Bridgeton City Park when she disappeared in 2019. Bridgeton police say that they've received a number of tips since the disappearance. However, the case remains unsolved. Dulce's family says the event will be at a tree named in her honor at the park. Michaela DePrince, a barrier breaking ballerina who trained at the Rock School for Dance Education in Philadelphia, has died. The dancer's official Instagram page announced the news on Friday, and the DePrince family confirmed her death. DePrince, who was an orphan from Sierra Leone, was adopted by a Cherry Hill family and performed on some of the world's biggest stages. Her breakthrough was performing in Beyonce's Lemonade visual album. DePrince was 29 years old. Demolition is set to begin today after flames tore through two buildings in Philadelphia's Frankfurt section. The inferno burned for hours, knocking out power and forcing many people to evacuate. Some families still cannot return to their homes. CBS News Philadelphia reporter Ryan Hughes shows us how neighbors are now leaning on one another as they try to figure out what comes next. The lights are back on in many homes after power was restored, but Philadelphia police are still blocking part of the 1200 block of Adams Avenue in the city's Frankfurt neighborhood. Neighbors say it's been a chaotic two days after this inferno ignited on their street early Friday morning. Oh my God. There was fire everywhere on the building and was so scared. <laughs> Gabriela Souza and her father returned to their apartment Saturday afternoon to get clothes and medicine. They were forced to evacuate after two unoccupied buildings, including this warehouse, went up in flames, sending thick smoke into the air. But Souza says officials told her she still can't sleep here because the building next to her apartment needs to be demolished. Oh, I stay at my friend's house. At the night and the sleep of the dead. Now I just came here to put everything back here, like my clothes. But for the night, we're not going to sleep here again. The Red Cross says a handful of residents also can't return home because they live within the demolition zone. So Michelle Banano Morales is letting her two neighbors stay with her for the time being. So I cooked for them and I opened up my home for them. Some people told us they heard explosions as cars parked at a nearby auto shop also caught fire and it took firefighters hours to knock down the flames and get the fire under control. 
PGW was on scene Saturday repairing a gas line and a fence was put up around the charred buildings. Now, as neighbors on this block help one another, they tell us they're thankful no one was hurt in the fire and they hope things soon get back to normal. A local place like home, you already know that. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Neighbors tell me they were told demolition on one of the buildings is set to begin on Sunday. Meantime, investigators are still working to determine exactly what caused the massive fire. In Frankfurt, Ryan Hughes, CBS News, Philadelphia. A bomb scare caused a tense moment at the Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport yesterday morning. Just before 1130, the airport was notified of the threat. Staff immediately made an announcement and evacuated everyone out of the airport. Officials are still unsure if there was a, speci a specific area of the airport the threat was targeting. The investigation is ongoing. To some breaking news this morning, the SpaceX Polaris Dawn crew has safely returned to Earth after making history with that first commercial spacewalk. The Crew Dragon capsule carrying the astronauts splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico a little after 3.30 this morning. Officials, they commissioned the USS New Jersey, the U.S. Navy's newest attack submarine. A ceremony was held yesterday morning in Monmouth County to officially integrate the submarine into the naval fleet. Dozens of elected officials, sailors and others attended that commissioning at Naval Weapons Station Earl in Middletown. The Navy says USS New Jersey is now the first fully gender integrated submarine built for both male and female sailors. Today is the second day of the welcome week at Drexel University. Drexel shared these photos on X of its newest dragons as they settle into their new home. According to Drexel's website, the school is hosting more than 250 sessions and events throughout the week to help students kick off their academic journeys right here in Philadelphia. Happening today, the 40th annual Fall for the Arts Festival returns to Chestnut Hill. Germantown Avenue will be transformed into an arts and craft marketplace today. Our Fall Festival extraordinaire, Rossi Matei, is live with us this morning again yeah. with a look at that festival we keep adding to his resume. We do, yes, hours. yes. Hope you're writing these down, Ross. <laughs> I love the titles, guys. Again, keep them coming. I'm Mr. Fall. Let's do this thing. Fall festivals are my cup of tea. And if they're yours, too, I would recommend coming out to Chestnut Hill today. We've got Fall for the Arts Festival. They're going on 40 years of doing this, so they're obviously doing something right. We've made our way out onto Germantown Ave because this is really the epicenter of the party, and the activity level has really picked up in the last hour. we got vendors showing up left and right, artists especially, and uh, I want to introduce my good friend here, Melissa, uh, who is a really good sport. First of all, we had another <laughs> artist lined up. Didn't really make it here in time, so we said, Melissa, on the spot, can you show off some of your artwork? <laughs> she said, absolutely. So sure. tell me about your style, what it is you make, and, and how would you describe your style in your own words? So I, um, I was motivated to make um, fabric art, is what I call it, from uh, materials that aren't being used. Um, so I get fabrics from thrift stores, from friends, um, just bringing new life to them. So I make tote bags and um, quilts and all kinds of things. So anything that can be hand sewn with uh, thrifted fabrics. Um, that's what I do. I absolutely love that. And you're normally out of Lancaster County, so we thank yeah. you for making the journey here yeah. today to Chestnut Hill. Um, show off some of your work, if you would. How would you describe this? And, and uh, what kind of clientele do you normally get? Who do you <laughs> normally recommend these items to? Right. So um, I like this one. This is a quilt, and it's made from all recycled uh, shirts. So flannel shirts, um, corduroy. Um, canvas, all different types of materials that I found um, either at thrift stores or from friends and I made a quilt out of it so it can cover a you know a twin size bed and it's really nice and warm. Here's another one um, it's just a big sunflower tote bag um, this is made out of an old dress and this is another old dress so um, I just try to make something beautiful out of things that are old. We need more of that. Absolutely <laughs> lovely stuff. I love it. Come say hi to Melissa if you come out to the festival today in Chestnut Hill. So many great artists who are repurposing a lot of stuff that would normally not get used, which we love to see. Guys, back to you. So, um, Mr. Fall, it's great to see you out there in a good mood. Uh, folks at home, you don't know, Ross and I, our desks are right next to each other. We've been in a bad mood since May because it's been so hot. <laughs> now it's sort of, you know, the, the, the temperatures are going down. We feel like we could be our true selves. This is their season, folks. Yes. <laughs> Listen, we're still going through what feels like summer, Howard, but we can see the silver lining. It's right on the horizon there. We're almost there. Falls here. This is our time of year, Ross. Our time of year. <laughs> Thanks so much, you know. Ross. <laughs> Thank you, Ross.
Now, as many of you know, the Jersey Shore is great any time of year, and Sea Isle City is hosting the Fall Family Festival this weekend. If you're going, it's a good chance to check out Fish Alley. That is where you'll find Mike's Seafood and a taste of 113 years of the family history. That family, they settled in away from the beach on the marshland and began to build their empire with their knowledge of the sea they brought from their native country, Italy. Friends that visit us all the time at the Jersey Shore and that first thing on their list is Mike Seafood. When you come in the shop, you feel that there's something different about this place. Now the Fall Family Festival is about to get underway starting at 9 o'clock this morning and goes until 4 o'clock this afternoon.